Can you hear me? Hello? 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 Yes, sir. Okay, I'm starting. So, okay, so that main thing is that where's category three? Okay, so that again I'm repeating that. So basically, you need the concept. Nowhere done so. Extra is a topological space. So you have this set of first category. And set of second category. This is means A is a subset of X equal to A. So about A is no at dense if you have this. Okay. On the other hand, if A can be written, this is then A is called no at dense. A is called set of first category. If A equal to this, where each n is no at dense. And second category is simple. If it is not of first category. These definitions you need. Okay, now basically I want to prove that every complete metric space is a bare space, and bare space definition is that here, X tau topological space. Look here, it is defined on a subset. Here is the whole space is called a bare space. If every non empty open subset of X, okay, non empty open subset of X is of Second category in X, and it means X star. So that you need that second category. Definition nowhere dense set, first category, second category, then bare space. My job is to prove that every complete metric space is a bare space. So here, in order to prove that, I am using going to use the Regel theorem 4.2, page 142. Okay. This I have given complete proof. The all subset expansion. Okay. So, so that I am not proving it, but I am explaining it. Look here. I am giving the equivalent characterizations of bare space because often we do not prove whether it's a bare space by using the definition. But actually, often you use the condition B. Condition B that last time yesterday I explained that if you have UN, a countable family of open sets, open dense sets, open plus dense for any family of this. 10 sets in X implies this is also dense. Particularly, this is non empty. Look, if it is empty, then its closure will be also empty. It can't be dense. 
in particular it implies that this is non-empty they were we are getting stronger thing it is dense in x dense mean almost is x okay so that condition p is very useful and c i have given a problem and that is actually i have picked up from ali prince barkin sir they have asked that show that x is a bare space if and only if c holds that means complement of any set of first category in x is dense that means if you take complement of any set of first category suppose a is a set of first category first category then x minus a is dense that means x minus bar equal to x this is a problem i have given the answer that actually you have the answer here okay and condition d says look if you have a countable union set closed no hard dense set that is no hard dense set so if a is a countable union a is a countable union a closed no where then sets then this is itself interior is empty look here example just i can give that r later on we prove every complete matrix is a bare space so this is a bare space so q so q is a Each point is closed and no hard dense. Q is a countable union of closed no hard dense. Also, interior of Q is R. For example, but it happens. Okay, so this theorem, particularly, you should know the equivalence of A and B. Okay, so I am not giving you the proof. You can read. You should read the proof. Don't mug up the proof anything. Just see that whether you understand the steps. Okay. now in page 144 i already made a comment that people talk about condition b they often they take it as definition of bare set because apparently they think it's more uh, easy to understand and also it's more easy to apply okay now the thing is that that is fine but actually nali pranthis and berkin sir matrix space kitab they prove they prove this every complete matrix space is a bare space okay but i am going to prove little bit stronger thing but same proof that i want to prove this is given is it but my my theorem is my result is every completely metrizable space is a bare space. well proof is exactly same but we we are going to get lot more things here now remember that metrizable space that x star if you have a topological space then it is called metrizable if there exists a metric d <coughs> such that d generates d gives the topology tau C generates tau, and it's called metrizable. That means tau comes from a metric. Then this is called metrizable. <clears throat> If it happens, this is a complete metric. If it happens, this is a complete metric. Then it is called 
completely metrized way. If P is a complete metric, then X tau is called completely metrazy. So what actually do in our proof? Proof of this result, first one, second one, is difference in the first line. Here I said, since every completely metrizable space, the best way I want to, so I will start with this. I say, since this is completely metrizable given, so there exists a complete metric B such that D gives this, so that we can start with this complete metric space. After that, it will be this proof on the this metric space, complete metric space. So this is the first line on the change. Uh, look, so that exactly I'm going to do it so that if you read the proof from the Ali Francis Barkinza, okay, that is page in Ali Francis Barkinza, it is for page 400, sorry, page 44 and theorem 6.7. But you see, I have taken the proof from there. Basically, I was explaining a little more. Okay. Now, thing is, why completely metrizable? This is a stronger result. Okay. Let me that I already told you that that look, if you have minus pi by two and pi by two, if you take the standard usual metric on this say x, this is not complete. Not complete. But if I give another metric row on this, this way I give. Here I define this way. Tan x minus tan y. Advantage is that rho is equivalent metric to this. Rho is equivalent. Two. I said, remember that two metrics are equivalent if they generate the same topology. That means row generate the same topology on this usual topology. Topology given by is called the usual topology. So that row also gives usual topology. But rho is complete. But it's a complete metric. That means this is completely metrizable. That means this space minus pi by two, pi by two, this is completely metrazable. Be careful about the ter term. Look, this is an incomplete metric space. So if you go by this, oh, it is incomplete. So you do not know. Look, I am saying every complete metric space is a bare space, their result. It doesn't say that incomplete metric space cannot be a bare space. <clears throat> it's a positive result. But here I am getting more. Though it is incomplete, but it is completely metrazable. So because of my result, Okay, the way I am proving. So this is a bare space. If you go by only that, every complete metric space is a bare space, then you do not have any information on this. But if I prove this, then I know it's a bare space. Okay, so that is the advantage. Okay, now I have given an idea that how to prove that this is a complete metric and that. In fact, I have given the general result. I have given you an exercise, but actually in the result itself, in the result itself, the proof you have. So look, let me explain that. Suppose you have bijection. You recall that there in the bijection minus pi by two to pi by two, the tan function. Okay, right. Mm. 
So actually tan inverse, arc tan is. So it's a supposed bijection. That means one to one correspondence. Uh, these are topological space. Only thing you see, suppose this is metrizable. And you have one more condition, that is very good. So both F and F inverse are continuous. Such a map is called a homeomorphism. Right now, you do not need to worry about it. Okay. Next semester, I will teach you a lot more on that. Suppose both F, since it's a bijection, so F inverse also exists. Condition hypothesis is this. First, you are assuming it's a bijection and so that both maps are defined and both are continuous. It is saying the result, if it is metrizable, then this will be metrizable. Look, since both are continuous, F inverse, its inverse is F. So, other way you cannot, could also consider. It will be a similar thing. It is saying if it is metrizable, then this will be also metrizable. And if it is completely metrizable, then it will be completely metrizable. Okay, right? That is the result is saying that look, rho is a metric on this, and rho. Is, now the thing is that if it is a metrizable, what metric you will take? Look, so if this tau is coming from a metric D. But if I want to show that this is metrizable, that means sigma comes from a metric. Look, idea, look, I have the tools of the thing basically here. So, but and so I need to drag this structure here. So, sigma comes from a metric. So, how will I do this? That, how will I think the which will be the metric? So, the simple thing, you have, do not have any choice because that is the only choice you should try. That means if you take rho y1, y2, I'm defining a metric rho. Define rho. One y as such this. Of course, y1, y2 belongs to y. The only choice you have, you have to drag here. Look, this is a bijection. So that f inverse y1 is a single point. Not only exists, it is a single point. Similarly, f inverse y2. But this is there in x. So I will take this. Okay. Since D is a metric, rho will be a metric. You can easily check that. Okay. And you can easily check it. Forget about the sigma. If since D is a metric, rho will be a metric. And if D is complete, D is complete. If D is complete, then so is rho. That's easy because I actually you can see that. Here I am getting an isometry. That means you take this map now. This is an isometry, onto isometry. Onto isometry, everything is remain same for, for the matrix. So if you have a cosy sequence here, its image will be cosy and vice versa. So if your cosy sequence converges here, its image will also converge here. Okay. So that D is a complete show is rho. So that this much is simple. Okay. Only thing that we'll have to prove that rho gives a gives the topology sigma. That is a bit tricky in a sense, but it is not difficult. Only thing to show that rho generates sigma. Look, how do you do that? Basically, first you'll have to look at the rho topology generated by this you know, tau rho. This means topology united by this. That means you'll have to show tau rho equal to sigma. That you'll have to show this to tau rho is contained in sigma and sigma is contained in tau rho. That means if you take any open set here, you'll have to show it is open here. And similarly, if you have open with respect to sigma, then you'll have to show it is open here. Okay, right? That is the only way to prove two, two topologies are same. Okay, so that you'll have to do it. So this is the general thing. So now if we apply on it this minus pi by two pi by two, you get this thing. Okay, right. So well, now I am coming to the point. This thing. 
that theorem 4.3 by result. But here, before proving the result, first thing you look that I have, I have made a comment because that I will need that. Suppose you have this. What's going on? Somebody. <laughs> Hello. I think you should mute it. What is going on? VXR. Suppose you have. You have a metric space XG. And suppose there is a subset of X. And then you have this, then this R. If I take this, now closed ball CXS, closed ball centered at X. That means this Y belongs to X such that TXY less than or equal to S. <coughs> closed ball. So you can easily see that. So this will be this. Okay, R by 2. So this will be there. So this is less than or equal to R by 2. That is strictly less than R. So it will be there. So that means given a point X belongs to here, A, if A is an interior, X is an interior point of A, I can take this. Why I am going to do it? Because I told you that. I am going to apply Cantor's intersection theorem. I need, of course, I am starting with a complete metric space, completely metrizable. But Cantor's intersection theorem you recall that it tells you that you have a sequence of closed sets. Okay, non-empty closed sets. Each Fn is non-empty. Closed. And decreasing order. That means this. Oh, sorry. The pen is this. Contains a pen plus one and diameter of a pen goes to zero. I'm recalling the statement of Cantor's intersection theorem that we have a sequence of closed sets, this decreasing, non empty, such the diameter of this goes to zero, then the conclusion that this is non empty. In fact, it will consist of one point because of this condition. But main thing is that you need intersection is non-empty. So that's why we'll have this kind of situation. Then we'll take this. So we'll consider these closed balls. Okay. And R will decreasing so that it will have the decreasing sequence. And it will be non-empty because X is always there. Okay. okay. So it will be non-empty. So this is the idea of the Cantor's intersection theorem. We will do that. Another thing, small thing we require. Look, remember that if x tau, if you have it, you have a subset of x, and x belongs to x. Now look, I just proved. I said the word. I gave the idea that why you should define. So x belongs to a bar, a is a closer point in topological specificity. If and only for every open set, u containing x, u intersection a not equal to 5. That means the intercept. That is the thing. Every open set. OK, now suppose and in metric space, this is the if that's the idea I got. If you if it is a metric space. Then. X belongs to a bar. Depend on a. For every R, because every R will give you a neighborhood of that greater than zero. B XR. Intersection A not equal to 5. This is actually you took the definition, the matrix was closer point. 
and then you say that the how to generalize this definition okay so matrix space is coming now look so x belongs to a bar if you have a this is definition in matrix space this is definition in topological space and they are equivalent actually when you go for matrix space okay. now look suppose a is dense okay then what will you get that means each point of x is a closer point so if you take x x belongs to a bar that means each point is a closer point so e, x belongs to a bar that means for every r i will have in a metric space i will have this that means what you are getting for all x it is happening and for all r it is happening that means i am getting for all x belongs to this for all r belongs to for all r so for all r greater than 0 okay this will have if you a bar is dense if and only if actually you can see that a bar equal to x if and only if you have this okay this is the thing and in case of general topological space bxr you will look it will happen what so this is the thing actually we require the bxr intersection is not equal to 5 okay right we'll use it in both ways because i am having countable intersection dense open set is dense so i am starting with the familiar dense open sets i will use here and i will prove this to show that their intersection is dense okay and just though i don't need right now but you can see that if we should take a topological space just and a subset of x then a bar equal to x if and only if for every non empty open set for every non empty open set non empty open set u in x a intersection u not equal to just take any point any open set you take any point here that will be a, so you will be neighborhood of that point but that is dense so it will have this so you will have this okay so right so but here you remember that for the metric space x t is a subset of x again i am writing it so this is the key thing a bar equal to x if and only if bxr intersection a not equal to 5 for all x belongs to b x and for all positive r for all r this is me so with this the proof is simple okay I'm coming to that proof. Okay. Now, now look, I'm saying my result is every completely metrizable space is a pair space. Two things. Right. First, it is completely metrizable space. Check x term. So on the proof, we are doing it since x tau is completely metrizable. There exists a complete metric. This is important. P on X sorry, such that B generates a topology 
down. So we can start with a start with metric space ht. Second thing is that is bare space. I'm not going to prove that every open set, non empty open set is of second category. I'm going to use that result, previous result. I think that is theorem 4.2, the condition B, that I am going to do this. Okay. Right. Hmm? So that, but I'm going to use it. So I'm going to use it to prove this is a bad space. That means suppose, now look. So let A and B a sequence of dense open sets. So let A and B a sequence of dense and open sets. in XT. I'll have to show this. This is dense. Equal to X. I told you what I'll prove that. So that, look. So you are doing, taking this. Now look, you have this. Each N is open in X, D, and N bar equal to X. Okay, this is given hypothesis. And to prove, look, to prove means what? That you'll have to. That means what? By what I just now explained that you'll have to show that P XR that means to show intersection this means over all N not equal to five for all X belongs to X and for all R Greater than zero. This you have to show. Look, I am using an algorithm to ultimately you need to prove this. So that means you choose any x, you choose any r. That exactly I did. Okay. This I have explained already the technique. Okay. So you choose any x. Okay. This. Okay. So pick up any such open ball b x r. That means you pick up any x, pick up any r. I'll have to show this. Okay. Now, how will I do this? Okay. So, this you need to prove. So, I have chosen this ball. Okay. Now, look that. Remember that each A, one, A in is open as well as dense. So, I'm starting with A1. You start with first A1. Then, hmm? Not equal to 5 because A1 is dense. I've already explained because A1 is dense. Since okay, now look, look, I am using both open and dense. Now, here I have used dense. Now, look, A1 is open and BXR is also open. So intersection of two open set is open. Okay, right? Okay, so here, so this is open and okay, fine. Now, so that, but this is non-empty. So you are getting this. So there exists X1, belongs to But this is open set. Now you're working inside a metric space. So this is, this is an interior point. This is an open set. This is open. This intersection of two open sets. So that means there will exist a ball around X1 such that it will be contained in this. That already I explained. I can take what? As a, a closed ball. Okay, right? So by the remark, I said that 
So there exists, look, this note by the remark made in the top of this page, there exists R1. So there exists R1 greater than zero. Of course, R1, I can choose this because you know B, X, don't confuse that S, is this contained in this. If S bigger than root 1. Similarly, this. So if you get R1 greater than or equal to 1, you take another R1, which is smaller than this, that will be contained. So that I can choose this, such that, look, C, this is X1, X1, R1, okay? Look here at it. C, X1, R1, contained in this. CX1, R1 contained in this. Okay. So that means you have got this. Look, you started with the, any arbitrary point X, then in number are greater than zero, and you have got this thing. X1 belongs to C, X1, R1 contained in B, XR intersection u1 okay and of course r1 positive and also i can choose r1 less than equal to one okay now look i need to do eventual induction process but how will you go to first for going to induction process you should know that how you go to the second stage this is first step i got okay now you look here what the d i did in the first step that i am going to repeat it but here you take this thing, B, X1, R1. This is the closed wall. So this is contained in this. Now remember that each N is dense. So again, this will be non-empty. Okay, this will be non-empty. So there exists X2. There exists X2 belongs to this. Okay. Not since x2 belongs to this, again, this is also open because this is open, this is open. So I will get another R2, okay, such that you, I will have this. C, x2, R2, okay. Okay, right, and this thing, okay, and I will choose, I can choose, of course, R2, 0 less than R2, okay, right, look, or not only that, I can choose that, I think I have forgotten to write here, chosen so that, hmm, let me see that. Ah. Anyway, automatically it will come and that. Okay, it is coming automatically. Look, if you already have got some idea about matrix space, do know why I am doing it because I will be getting a sequence so that it importance one by n, it goes to converges. So this way I'm getting a sequence, X2, I get this, okay, right? So I can go to the second step. Now I, I need to complete the process inductively. So, so suppose X1, X2, Xn, I was just wondering that whether I need to emphasize that will automatically come up to this thing. This you can emphasize, I can take this also. Not only R2 less than or equal to half, I can also choose R2, this, that means R2 mean, less than or equal to minimum of 1. Okay. Right. But actually automatically will happen. I was looking at the proof of that. Okay. So that, so suppose you have chosen x1, x2, xn 
and R1, R2, Rn, I have chosen that way, such that this you have. Okay, that means at the end stage, you will have this thing. P, look here, one, it is coming two, so that an end stage you will have this not equal to five. Okay, because this is open, this is open, intersection is open, and this is dense, n plus one, so this is not equal to five. So there exists xn plus one belongs to this. Basically induction means how for you move from n state to n plus one state. That I am explaining. So if you have this, and again by the same arguments what I did, okay, there exists this thing. xn plus one belongs to C, xn plus one, rn plus one will be contained in this. And also make sure that you choose rn plus one less than one by less than equal to doesn't matter one by n plus one so this is the induction process you are doing so by this we need to have the induction process okay so by this way you i am i have got a sequence xn okay and i have got a numbers such that Now look, each closed wall is a closed set. Also, you see that you are calling Cn. Okay, so Cn plus one calling C, Xn plus one, Rn plus one. By the choice, this this I'm calling Cn plus one. B Xn, Rn intersection. N plus one. So this is intersection. So this is this subset, and this is this. So I was wondering whether I need to have this. This is decreasing order. It automatically will come back. So this is CN. Call it. That means you are getting CN plus one. Cn plus one. This you are getting for all n. Okay, and these are closed sets. Not only that. Now, what will be the diameter of this? Look, diameter is this because this. So it will be. It can be less less than also two R n, but R n is. Less than equal to one by n, so this is two by n. So this goes to zero. That's why I needed that, so that this n diameter goes to zero. This is decreasing. They are closed set. Okay. Of course, the way I have picked up, they are all non-empty. Now you are using that. Is, this is a complete metric space. This is the only place you are using. This is a complete metric space. I am taking so much time to prove it because I want to. You should understand some techniques of the proof. There is no point in just knowing some brayards. It's it's much. It is much more important to learn the techniques. And also, I am giving you this thing just because I want to see how Cantor's intersection theorem you need. Okay, what is the importance of Cantor's intersection theorem? It's a complete metric space. So that by Cantor's intersection theorem, this is non-empty. Fine. Though actually it will have only one point. That is fine. Cantor's intersection theorem there exists. Why belongs to this? Okay. My claim is that this thing. That claim. Why belongs to B X R. Intersection. समझ गए? 
In order to do this, I'll write what I need to show. So by Cantor's intersection theorem, I got this. Now I want to claim this. That means I want to need to show this is here and this is also each n. That exactly I have explained that. Okay. How I explained that? Look. Y belongs to the intersection. Okay. Y belongs to intersection. So particularly Y belongs to C1. Remember C1 is C X1 R1. Okay. Right? But C X1 R1 is what? P X R intersection A1. Recall that C1 is contained in this thing. P X R intersection A1. Okay. Right? Hmm? So that this y belongs here. So that means in particular you are getting y belongs to bx. So one part is done and y belongs to a1. Okay. Now for the rest that a1 I got for a2 this is this. I look y belongs to hmm, cn plus 1 for all n. That means it's starting from C2. Okay, right? Implies hmm? here I am writing what I have taken Cn plus 1. This is C hmm? Xn plus 1 Rn plus 1 which is contained in B Xn Rn hmm? intersection A n plus 1. That's why I did it separately A1 for it is starting from 2. So now look y is here for all n. That means for A2, A3 starting A2, A3 like that. But already I have proved here that this y belongs to intersection this. But also I have proved y belongs here. So that y belongs to this. That exactly I needed to prove. That I have proved. So it's a bare space. I have shown that a countable intersection of any dense open sets is again dense. Okay. Right. Don't need to mug up, but I will strongly suggest that you should, you should hmm, read the proof, try to understand each and every line. But here, just wait for two minutes. Hmm? I will finish it and then I will leave it. I won't take that long class today. Okay. Okay, lest I forget, I am telling you that you have got, got the score for get for minor one and that. But I'm telling you first, I'm going to you read your answer scripts carefully. You see that where you made the mistake. Okay. And try to understand the mistake. That's very important. Because so that you don't repeat that mistake in future again. Okay. So that's very important. Just wait a minute. Hello, I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to go
हाँ तो वो तो कंप्लेन तो मैं सुबह किया था मैं तुम तो हूं Uh, sorry for the interruption. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am saying about the grading. I am saying so. First, try to understand your mistakes, and if you do not understand the mistake, you ask your friend who who you think may help you. And after that, you ask, and for that, you should ask the tutorial teachers, Bhavna and hmm, the other one. Okay, so. they will take care if you really think that you are right you have written something correctly and you are still you didn't get marks you will get marks okay so that you will get but it's it's important to understand first if you have made a mistake in that because just don't go for marks if you just go for marks then again in future you will make the same mistake particularly in major exam okay so that that is that is very important when i was in the us i was always appreciated non indian students indian students always will come to you asking for only marks they won't bother to understand what mistakes they did okay but other non indian students they will ask that where i made the mistake they will try to understand that mistake okay one indian was complaining i was doing the ta i was ta for a matrix theory course i think he didn't understand the difference between countable and uncountable He was taking the collection of metrics such a way it becomes countable. I just wrote that this need not be countable. This this won't be countable. This uncountable. And he thought he since he lost points, so he thought later on I realized that he was thinking that I took points for that. He mis made mistakes in many places. Then finally I realized I told him I didn't take off any marks for this comment though it is wrong. Oh, you didn't take off. Then, then he was convinced. So then, after the reading, I said, "No, I for other places I took the miss, but this is a wrong statement." Okay, so that is the attitude of the Indians there. 
particularly the Indian engineering students. Particularly if they come came from some regional college and that. Okay. Because that their wage is very competitive. So that's why they always suffer from the insecurity and that. But non-Indian students, I found that they are more interested in learning and that. That is another thing I am telling you. India produces a lot of PhDs and that. But the point is in science, it is far behind because Indians, they are always trying to mug up the things. Hmm? They are not understanding the things. That is the another problem with the Indian science and engineering. Particularly the engineering is far worse than science. Okay. Hmm? Indian science is much better than Indian engineering. Okay. Indian mathematics and physics quite ahead on that. But mostly they will see that they have the foreign kind of connection. Either they did PhD there or they have after PhD, they did postdoc there. Even when they come back, they came back, they had their background that they understood. Okay, so that is the thing. Creativity is something different. We just go for marks and marks, you never learn anything. Okay, <laughs> so hmm? my problem is that I try to make the student to learn something. You may not learn everything, but if you learn something, you will feel yourself happy that I have learned something. Okay, right? What is the point in getting A in a course and then you realize that the I mean, teacher realizes you have not learned anything? Huh? There is no point in that. Hmm. <laughs> you have to get that. You need to have the good grades, but at the same time, you need to learn it. Okay. A learning is a something sort of integrated process. It's not by learning mathematics and by learning, trying to some logic, how to do that. It's not only that you are learning mathematics, you are learning something life skill that you will, you will need throughout your life, that kind of attitude that how to solve the problem. OK, right here. I am not only telling you that is the best category theorem. I am saying I am mean, trying to teach you the how we look at the problem, how we will solve the problem in day to day life. Also, you should think that way. What is the problem? And how will you solve it? OK, now look. I have given a corollary here. Okay, corollary is saying that if X is a complete metrizable space in particular, if is this that corollary page 148, you look that if you have this, you have this, then if X is completely metrizable as a bare space, so particularly. X is non empty open set, X is of second category itself that I explained yesterday. Second category in itself. So that at least one of them has to be not no add dense. Otherwise, everybody is no add dense, it will be a set of first category. So there exists a not such that which the language is some add dense. In fact, often in the applications of the this theorem, best category theorem, we apply this thing, that corollary. Okay, but we do not say that by a corollary to bears category. We simply say by bears category theorem, we get this. This is the thing you will need everywhere. Hmm? That everywhere you need it. In fact, to prove that from this fact, now you have this. It's a metric space. Complete matrix so is the bare space. Then you show that this cannot be written as a countable union of closed sets, not an F sigma set. Not an F sigma set. We have used this bare space, but actually we have used this thing. Okay, this kind of thing. You remember that we have used Q, Q belongs to Q, and suppose you have this. You are writing. Okay, so at least one of them will be non empty, somewhere dense, and that gives you the contradiction. Okay, so this also in functional analysis, okay, we use this version. In fact, whenever you need to apply Baer's category theorem, usually this one you need. Now, in functional analysis, let me tell you that, that third semester you will do it. But functional analysis, every subject has some key theorems on which the entire 
subject is based on. So function analysis you have actually these pillars, they are called the four cornerstones. Four pillars. What are those pillars? This is PUV. Principle of uniform boundedness. QB, then open map theorem. And if this closed graph theorem has comes as a corollary to that, closed graph theorem. And Hanmanak theorem. And its corollaries. It has got a large number of corollaries. In fact, when even the, we say that by Hanmanak theorem, actually we mean it is one of the corollaries. Look, the whole function analysis is based on these theorems. But out of this, these three, Proof uses Baird's category theorem. Actually, they use this thing. So that if you did not have Baird's category theorem, functional is subject itself will be gone. Okay. Only here you don't need it. Okay. Now the thing is that, so that that's the importance of the Baird's category theorem. And I told you yesterday, any good result, You'll have only three families of that Baird's category theorem, compactness, and connectedness. At least one of them will have to be used. Will have to be used. If you don't have your result, then it's not a good result. Okay, directly or indirectly. So that this is the, that's why the importance of the Baird's category theorem. Here I have given historical perspective that there was an American math 1897. I, I, I have not written, but I can tell you something more. 1897, the American mathematician was good. He was doing some real analysis paper on that. He did this result on R. That means he showed, basically, this is a bare space. Basically, he showed it is a bare space, though he didn't of course, Baird came later on. How it came to be known as Baird space, that is also history. So, but actually, he proved that. That means he proved that every countable intersection of dense open sets is again dense in here. But 1899 is Rene Baird. He's a French. He proved it for RN. This is, but here Hausdorff, who is the one of the founders, probably the main founders of topology. Okay, 1913-14, he came, Hausdorff. Okay, but I said 1914. Actually, oh, year publication, often it is written 1913-1914. So many historians, they write 1913-1914. He did it, what I proved today that every completely metrizable space is a bare space. Okay, this is Hausdorff's theorem. What I proved. Okay. So unfortunately, it is only known as Baird's category theorem, which was a sort of special key. But the often is the issue in, in mathematics, it happens. Some, somebody does it for a particular case, but that helps that how you can improve that technique, how you can use that technique. If the technique doesn't work fully, how can modify the technique to, to use that? So the credit should go to that. Just because he did for a special case, that doesn't mean he doesn't get any credit. In fact, that shows the path, okay? Path may be long, you can work on the path, but who shows the path? He showed the path. So that actually I said, commented that it should be, he's the first one, so it should be called Osgood Bear Hausdorff theorem. What I proved in that. 
capital. It should be. But then you may see, I am just telling you some history, that why it is called a bad space. Okay. When you come back here, I think you only come, brother, for physical class on that. If you go to the library, but you can Nate, you can see that there is a lot of mathematics book, fundamental books, very good books. Usually we use it for research and that Burbaki's books. In almost all areas of mathematics. Burbaki's books. That is more precisely Nicolas Burbaki. In fine. And mathematics. All sorts, general topology, functional analysis, harmonic analysis. You get that. Okay. In fact, you should go to Wikipedia to read about Nicolas Burbaki. Okay. First thing, well, Burbaki was not a mathematician. In fact, Burbaki never existed. Okay. Then how come so many books in mathematics came under his system? Actually, a group of French mathematicians, they are outstanding mathematicians, group of French mathematicians. Outstanding mathematicians that you can look at the history. They wrote those books. They wrote. Okay. Under the name Nicolas Bourbaki. They chose the name just Nicolas Bourbaki. But Nicolas Bourbaki was not a mathematician. In fact, history says that he was an army man. Far away from mathematics. But these French people, particularly in Paris, you'll see a lot of cafes are there. These French people, when they met for discussing about the books and this, writing, I think that day's newspaper, one day in newspaper, they saw a name, Nicolas Bourbaki. Bourbaki. They saw. And they said, let's go by this name. It's just a whim. Their whims, they went by this name. So he was not a mathematician. Okay, so Nicolas Bourbaki, for our, for our case, it is actually a group of French mathematicians. And in fact, here in Bourbaki's book, Jail Topology, and where the book on Jail Topology, where they are discussing this Bayes category theorem, they gave basically history, what I am writing here. But still, they called it Bayes category theorem. Still, they couldn't overcome, last time I told you, bias, because they were French people. And René Bayer was a French. He was a French. So they gave credit on that. The credit should not go to René Bayer alone. Okay. So that's the thing in that. Okay. You should go to Wikipedia. That look at, read the history about this. Now, I want to discuss the problems in that. The first one, problem one already I have done. And problem number two, page 149. Hmm. Look here. What I am explaining, this proof is not easy and I am not asking of that. First of all, if you take, this, this means all function, continuous functions. The all real valued continuous functions. Okay, now <clears throat> later on after I teach, ah, after the break I will teach you, start the with compactness. This is a compact set and that it can be proved that every such function, every such function is bounded. So 
So every such function is bounded. Remember that if you have this. That means all the bounded functions, real world bounded function on zero one. That means this is contained in this. Strictly speaking, you need look. I have written this. So here x is this. So you need one more bracket. That you usually don't give it. Now on this, I have that big metric D, suprema metric. Remember that. I have given a pro problem in minor relation to the suprema metric. Okay, so this will be also metric space, same metric. This you know, this is a complete metric here. In fact, this will be a complete metric here. That means it will be a closed subset of this. So this is a complete metric space. Okay, so that the result what I have proved, that means this is a bare space. Particularly it is itself of second category. It's a bare space. Well, you may wonder that why I'm talking so much about this and that. Okay, this I have explained that and that. OK. Hmm? Now the question is this. This I have not said that that here. First, yeah, I have said here. This fact is used. That was proved by Banak. Banak is the main founder of functional analysis. I was talking about huh? Han Banak theorem is Banak, Stefan Banak. So that here. This. Is a bare space. We need to do some applied thing, math and calculus and that. Here, because of this, we get the existence. And then you can now we can even construct particular case. What is this? I'm saying. Can we have a continuous function? But F is nowhere differentiable. Nowhere differentiable. That means at no point of that, even point 0 and 1, you consider right derivative at the point 0 and left derivative 1. No, no such point, it is differentiable, such a function. Does, does it exist? Yes, it exists. Okay. Yes. Okay. Reason is how it proved that. Look, it is a fight between second category and first category. Look, this is of second category then. Whole space. Second category. If you can prove that. <coughs> Those continuous functions here, which is differentiable at some point, at some point, take that point, which is different at some point. If that is a set of first category, then obviously it cannot be the whole thing because this is second category, this is first category. If we can prove like this thing, suppose some say that F belongs to C01, F is differentiable at some point. In fact, this result we can extend to that. F is differentiable, left differentiable, right differentiable. We can do that also. I am explaining the simpler case. F is differentiable at some point. This A has to be proper subset. Reason is very simple. We can prove that it has to be set up first category, whereas this is second category. So it can't be the whole thing. Now we can say that is theoretical proof, but we can construct such function. Now people after that, once they know it exists, they constructed such function. So that is the main idea of that. 
of my saying so much in two and I, in fact, I said read problem number 28. Page 79 of that. You don't need to solve the problem, but at least understand the what the problem is saying. OK, that exactly what I said. But here I think they are saying in terms of more that one sided derivatives. Here I should tell you that this, this Ali Pranth is Berkins of Kitab. OK. It is written by them. They have the solution books. Ali Pranth has died. But I think Berkins is still alive, but is very old. They have written a solution book of this book. OK. But I'm not sure whether you can. I think you can find in the net and that. OK. But I have the solution book. I think it was gifted by a student to me. He, he lives in the US. I think. Yeah. He gave me that, I think. No, I think publisher gave me. He gave me the original book. The solution book, I think, was given by the. I'm not very sure. I have the original book here. Original edition and original book and the solution book. One of them is given by the publisher, one is them is given by, by one of my students who lives in the USA. OK. So, so I am saying. Read that, try to see that. OK. Hmm? I am taking so much time to tell you because the TAs won't be able to tell you that so much. Thing. OK, so what is the importance of that? So I am just trying to emphasize. The importance of Bayes category theorem. You don't need to bother about the proof. At least if you know correctly the statement of Baird's category theorem, that itself will be a big thing. You know that. Where I talked about in functionality, you'll do principle of uniform boundedness. Thing is that it's not the theorem is big. Statement is difficult. It is not. And also proof is not difficult. OK, but the thing is that here the many students come from PhD for PhD interview and they said. Some people say students say they are interested in functionalism. I just ask them if I am present there as the PUV statement, even not the proof of that. And often I am telling often they can't give the correct statement. OK, after that I do not ask any more question. Forget about the proof and that. OK. Problem is that. In many places in India, many universities, in many institutes also, functionality is not taught well. It's not taught well. It's not a difficult subject, but it's not taught well. And this is one example. Hmm? That I mean like IIT Kanpur, they don't teach well. In that. Once I, I know one student from IIT Kanpur, she couldn't give me the correct statement. OK. After, if somebody doesn't know the correct statement, what I will ask about the proof and that. I don't do that. Another person in my colleague was saying, oh, you don't ask any more question. I said, forget it. She couldn't even give me the correct statement. OK, so that what I'm saying, emphasizing is where's category theorem? Forget about the proof. First, make sure that you understand the statement correctly. Statement correctly. And whenever you try to apply, you Make sure that. How to apply and I told you that what actually we need to actually apply. Most often we apply the corollary corollary 4.4 page 148. OK, and. Problem number three I have given. It's solution if you understand it is in three lines. I have given them explanation on exercise three. That OK, that you should do it. And problem number four. I already told you it is problem number 14, page 48 of AB, actually theorem 4.2. Page 140 of this note proves that problem. OK, so problem three, you should be able to do it by what I have written in small letters and the normal exercise three. You should do it. OK, right? I think this is good enough for that. Where's category theorem? OK, so. I will meet you after the break. That means on 22nd October. OK. I'll meet you. I will send you the invitation.
that is class okay on 22nd october theek hai this time fine any question but make sure that you read your answer script very well and that compare with your questions and that that is very vital because you may think that it won't be repeated in mayor so the what's the point in doing it it is it it will be good because this is foundation up to minor if your foundation is not good then you won't do well in major so that's why you read your answer you read the question carefully and ask the ta's if you have any doubt okay even if you think it don't go by that or that it is just a good question or bad question don't go that if you have any doubt whether good or bad ask the ta's okay right and when you can ask your friend that's the best thing ask your friend that whether where i am wrong why or i am not understand okay see you on 20 second okay sir thank you thank you sir thank you sir and make sure happy break hope next semester you will have the physical class here in person class okay yes sir that will be a good thing you need to do have it because i mean i am not happy with the online teaching <laughs> yes sir it's also it not little... okay, sir. <laughs> online teaching is <laughs> is not teaching at all <laughs> understand okay. so me so you should have an opportunity to come 